Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Michelle, and thank you, everybody. And um, what wonderful prayers and manifestations. And so good to see you all here. Thank you for taking the time and making the effort. And, you know, I think that God is also very pleased. He's it, He's delighted when he sees his children taking the time to get to know him and to spend time with each other. And um, I did want to share today about some things that have been percolating in my heart as as I have um, I've been listening to a lot of teachings from um, that have been presented on this STF platform and kind of working them and looking at what the word has to say and doing you know some of my own work as well and also um, uh, a lot of my study has involved. Uh, looking at some of the REV commentary, which is just so illuminating to so many scriptures. So I would encourage all of you all to take advantage of that resource because it's truly invaluable. If you would open your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2, I'm going to start there. And I'm going to be talking about growing up together. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, in verse 1, we read, Therefore, put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander like newborn babies. Long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you grow up in your salvation. And I, I was just thinking about uh, newborn babies and the pure milk that they receive when they they first nurse their mother for the very first time. There's this very special kind of milk that is provided for them and it's called colostrum and this uh, milk has some unique qualities among other things it helps to cleanse their digestive system so that they're able to better receive uh, some of the heartier milk that will follow and come later and then also it provides the baby antibodies so that it helps protect them uh, from some of the things that they might not otherwise be protected from. So look in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And uh, starting in verse 1, we read, And I, brothers and sisters, was not able to speak to you, as to spiritual people, but as to people of the flesh, as to babies in Christ. I gave you milk to drink, not solid food, for you were not yet able to receive it. No, even now you are not able, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh? And are you not walking as unsaved people? This milk that Paul gave to the Corinthians was Jesus Christ and him crucified. Uh, look in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. In, um, in verse 1. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 1, it says, And I, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the sacred secret of God. For I decided not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. Paul taught Jesus Christ. He taught 
the Messiah. He taught the Savior of the world. All that Jesus Christ was, he um, fulfilled in fulfillment of the prophecies of the Hebrew scriptures. And um, he was able to teach this in great depth and detail so that the people who were hearing him could could comprehend and understand what he was saying because because that was some pretty earth earth shaking stuff and um look in acts chapter 17 in acts chapter 17 we will start in verse 1 it says now when they had traveled through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And according to Paul's custom, he went into them for three Sabbath days, reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and setting before them that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I am proclaiming to you, is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, and a great multitude of the God-fearing Greeks, not a few of the, and not a few of the prominent women. So, um, he taught Jesus Christ. He taught him crucified. Um, and all that this accomplished for, for us. Paul's manner, his routine was to teach from the scriptures. That's where he got started. And people listened to what Paul taught. And if they were interested, they didn't just take it at face value. They studied the scriptures for themselves. Um, look in verse 4 of Acts 17. Acts 17, verse, um, verse 4. <laughs> Some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas and a great multitude of the God-fearing Greeks and not a few of the prominent women. But... We read that uh, the Jews becoming jealous and taking along some wicked men from among those who loitered at the marketplace formed a mob and were setting the city in an uproar and assaulting the house of Jason. They were seeking to bring them out to the people. And when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and certain brothers before the rulers of the city, shouting, these who have turned the inhabited world upside down have come here also, whom Jason has received. And these all act contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, Jesus. And they troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city who heard these things. And when they had taken money as security from Jason and the rest, they let them go. And the brothers and sisters immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night to Berea. And when they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. See, that was as Paul's manner was. He had a routine. So, verse 11, now these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with great willingness, examining the scriptures daily to see if those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, along with many of the Greek women of high standing and the Greek men, not a few. So again, this established Paul's credibility because he was able to teach them from the scriptures. He knew what he was talking about. He could make it plain to them. And then he was able to teach them more. Things which maybe had not yet been written. Things about the details of 
what Jesus Christ truly accomplished for us, details about the manifestations of Holy Spirit, De how men and women were equal before God, things about the sacred secret that Gentiles and Jews were joint heirs with Christ, members together in his body, that there's no more need for circumcision, there's no more need for following dietary laws and the laws of the, uh, the Old Testament for righteousness sake but we have the righteousness of God in Christ in us. This went beyond what he initially taught. This was real meat. And he didn't just teach it, he lived it. He was not a hypocrite. He demonstrated the things that he taught. He was able to teach in detail and demonstrate speaking in tongues, interpretation, prophecy, his life exemplified knowledge and wisdom and power. Which is why he could say in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4, he said, mm, I'm in Acts. <laughs> Uh, give me a second. Okay. I planted Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. No, that's not it. Um, give me a second. Okay. First Corinthians chapter two, my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. Paul did not rely on his extensive education and background and his ability to use fancy words and great oratory. He simply demonstrated spirit and spiritual power. And that is what convinced the, uh, the people who chose to follow his teaching that he knew what he was talking about. He had something to teach them. But the foundation of that, the basis of that was on the scripture, that he was able to teach the scripture. He let his word and his words and his life speak for themselves. Uh, look in Hebrews chapter five. Um, Hebrews chapter five. In verse 12, for indeed being morally obligated to be teachers due to the length of time you have been taught, instead, you need someone to teach you again the rudiments of the beginnings of the word of God. Indeed, you have become ones who need milk, not solid food. What he was saying was, look, you should be reading at a college level by now, but I have to teach you the ABCs, your alphabet. You should be, you should be able to teach higher mathematics, but I have to teach you how to count from one to 10. Um, the reason that this was happening is because they had not been applying what they had learned. Teachers, start a new school year by reviewing what has previously been taught. Um, athletic coaches begin a new season by reviewing the basics. And the reason they do that is because probably the students, probably the athletes haven't really been doing a lot with what they had previously been taught. So there was a need for review. What we need to do is to continue doing the things that we have learned. And we need to be able to share those things with others in a very clear way. And that will help to really put it, um, really help it get settled into our own hearts. Um, 
We need to be doers of the word, not hearers only. So to continue to learn, um, maybe uh, we could take a little, do a little planning, goal setting, um, quiet ourselves down and get focused. I love um, what Sue Carlson shared in a, a teaching recently on a, in a book called Living Fearless by uh, Jamie Winship. Lord, what is the most important thing that you would like to tell me right now? What a great thing to do as you quiet yourself and sit in prayer with your heavenly father. You know, Moses didn't have all the details of what he set out to do when he um, decided that he was going to um, help lead the children of Israel out of Egypt and into the promised land. Uh, but he did have a goal. And as he set out on that goal, <clears throat> excuse me, the details became clear. Um, definitely as you plan, prioritize, put God first. Definitely take time to pray and ask for God's guidance. Um, and again, organize yourself, you know, maybe have your, your Bible, your notebooks, any other books, uh, computer, whatever you need, have them there with you all in one place. Develop a routine. You know, Paul had a manner, a routine for accomplishing his goal, which was to take the word of God to the Gentiles. Um, when, you, when you are organizing yourself um, perhaps um, review in the evening before, review the next day's activities, um, have your, your tools ready, the things you'll need, whether that's uh, things for studying or tools for working, um, what clothes you're going to wear, are they ready? Have them ready. Um, I, I love lists. Lists, I think, are great. It might be helpful to you to make a list. I know some people really are not list makers, <laughs> which I don't understand. But anyway, just some helpful tips. <laughs> um, when you're looking for a teacher, consider how well grounded in the scriptures are they? Um, are they able to teach the word clearly and effectively? Do they practice what they preach? Um, you know, do are you able to see that uh, they understand the the depth of what Jesus Christ accomplished for us? Do they understand how to operate spiritual power? Do they manifest Holy Spirit? Do you see evidence of wisdom and knowledge and power in their life? Um, thing, those are things that you want to look for. Um, So let's look in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And um, sorry, there we go. Yeah, again, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Um, so then, neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only the one who is giving the increase, which is God. This, this refers, of course, to um, growth in the church but it can also apply to us as individuals. You know, every child looks forward to growing up, um, but no matter how hard they think about it, they can't make it happen. It's God who gives the increase. But, but what a child can do is they can fulfill some of the conditions for growing up. They can keep themselves safe by
by uh, doing the things that their parents, their elders have taught them. They can eat nourishing food when it's presented to them. Um, and if it's not, they can make a little effort and go find some. Um, so only God can give the increase, but certainly we can help to um, make sure the conditions are right, that it can happen. So when will we be fully grown up? Look in Ephesians chapter four. Um, Ephesians chapter four, starting in verse 11, it says that he gave some to be apostles and some to be prophets and some to be evangelists and some to be pastors and teachers for the equipping of the holy ones for the work of the ministry with the goal of building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, growing into a mature person, attaining to the measure of the stature of Christ. That word, uh, well, let's, uh, I would like to read to you from the REV commentary on Ephesians 4.13 until we all attain to the unity of the faith. Ephesians 4.13 is about the future. Christians will not attain unity in the faith or grow into full maturity in Christ in this present evil age in Galatians 1.4. We will be unified, attain new knowledge of Christ, and be mature in him in the future in the administration of the fullness of times, Ephesians 1.10. But that does not excuse Christians from working diligently right now toward the goal of being unified in the faith and becoming mature in Christ. The, in in uh, Ephesians 4.13, that word stature, uh, the, uh, in the stature of Christ, um, it's a word uh, in Greek of helikia. I think I'm saying it right. Anyway, it's the same word that's used in the Gospels um, of the man born blind when his parents said, he is of age. He's of full stature. Ask him. In in my kitchen, <laughs> there um, there's a spot on the wall where... Um, my children would measure themselves as they were growing up. And they did this to compare themselves to uh, people that they knew who were grown. Some of the adults in their lives would consent to stand at the same spot and have a place marked where, you know, where, where they had reached. So what, uh, what the children were doing was not so much comparing themselves to how big are they growing, but how are they growing to the, the stature of an adult? Is that, because that was what they were really interested in knowing. Um, in the family where I grew up, there were four boys and the two older boys had a younger brother assigned to them that they were supposed to help out. They had to teach them how to tie their shoes. They had to teach them how to throw a ball, how to uh, study when they were given homework. They helped them to grow up. And um, that's the way we're supposed to be in the church. We help each other. Um, so my encouragement is for each of us to continue in the word, to continue to study the word diligently, to, to have a, a plan for growth, knowing that it is God who gives the increase and um, that we can grow up together and look forward in the future 
to attaining the full stature of Jesus Christ. So let's help each other grow up. Thank you.